All right, everybody, welcome again. And today we are looking at a very exciting topic that I felt so strongly in my heart that we should handle. And I'm believing that as we begin to dig deep into this topic and begin to learn the kingdom lessons that God would like us to learn from this particular station, we are only going to become better as kingdom entrepreneurs and kingdom professionals. And you know, one thing about the kingdom of God is that the more you grow in the knowledge of him and in the ways of the kingdom, that is how you grow in grace and in power. Because it is, it is not possible to command authority in darkness. It's not possible to command power in ignorance. And the more you grow, and that is why you will understand or you must have experienced that uh, teaching the word deeply and carefully and consistently is a core pillar in this fellowship, in this ministry. Because it is critical for your spiritual growth. It is critical for your career manifestation as a kingdom person. And there is one thing that is certain about the work that we do is that God is interested to use people in the marketplace to showcase his excellences. And the only way that we can grow to that dimension where God can trust us and show his faithfulness and use us as channels to showcase his excellences and the knowledge of him is for us to grow consistently in that particular area. That is why no matter what is happening, make sure you are investing in your spiritual you are investing in who you are becoming as a person. So today we are looking at the topic counseled into wrong actions. Counseled into wrong actions. Or you are guided into wrong actions. And this is a very important topic, looking at this dispensation where the world is so chaotic, a dispensation where it is easier for somebody to create a Facebook page and begin to teach things that are not founded on the ways of the kingdom, even career-wise, even business-wise, you know. We're now in a dispensation where somebody can wake up and read books and claim to become a coach or a consultant without going through the proper ethical training and structure or even producing the results that you can see a track record that you can embody to also become or produce that kind of result. So it is easier to be counseled into the wrong actions if you don't understand the ways of the kingdom or you don't understand the character of God. And we see this happening in the book of Daniel. And we're looking at Daniel chapter 6, verse 8 to 9. But to understand the whole scenario, it is good to read from verse 6 down to verse 9. Uh, verse 6 says that, Then these commissioners and satraps agreed to approach the king and said to him, King Darius, live forever. Verse 7. All the commissioners of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors have consulted and agreed that the king should establish a royal statue and enforce an injunction that anyone who petitions that is praise to any god or man besides you, O king, during the next 30 days, shall be thrown into the den of lions. Verse 8. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it 
may not be changed in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which ensures that it may not be altered or revoked. Verse 9, so King Darius signed the document that is the injunction. If you're somebody who studies history or you study patterns of how things happen, I love to just study patterns and see how things happen. It makes it easier for you to understand the way systems and structures and human beings and empires and kingdoms are being built or they were built in the past. And when you study the ancient Persian empires or in the age where Daniel was in Babylon, during this time, anytime there is an assembly of commissioners, anytime there is an assembly of prefects and satraps and counselors and governors, that means anytime you see this group of people gathered together to have a discussion, it means that something extraordinary or something unusual is about to happen or it has happened or something terrible like a crisis is about to happen. For us in the corporate world, many a times you can hear the company calling for an extraordinary board meeting. There are always ordinary board meetings that happen almost every month. But sometimes when there is a special situation, a company can organize what is called an extraordinary board meeting. A meeting that is out of the ordinary because there is a situation that needs immediate attention. And in this particular encounter, we begin to see that a group of very important noble men in the kingdom got that together. And the Bible refers to them as commissioners, prefects, satraps, counselors, governors, top people in that empire, they gathered and they decided to influence the king to invoke or to sign a decree. And in that ancient time, when the king sees these people, he knows that something extraordinary is going on. Or when the king notices that something extraordinary is about to happen, he also summons the people. And Daniel, and one of the most popular Bible uh, stories is Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel ended up in the lion's den because of betrayal and manipulation of these people. Because Daniel was also among the ranks of these people. And when you study the start of this, you will see that the king originally did not have the intentions to pass this kind of decree. The king was influenced, the king was counseled to pass this decree. And when you study the Bible in the book of Daniel, you will notice that Daniel was one of the three leaders directly under King Darius. And the Bible records that he shined above the other two leaders because he had excellent spirit. And just to add, every Christian possesses the ability to manifest an excellent spirit because every Christian, every believer has an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And part of the package that the Holy Spirit brings into the life of a Christian is the spirit of excellence. If you are doing anything, you should do it excellently. There's a spirit inside of you that can empower you to operate from the level of excellence. And Daniel being somebody who continually dwell in the presence of God 
and carried the Spirit of God upon him, he had the Spirit of excellence. What does that mean? Daniel had a good attitude in his work and in life. And this made him the object of attack. The other two leaders started attacking him because they were jealous of him. And that is what led to these people gathering together to influence the king to sign a decree or a document. So when you study the scripture for that, you will notice that these governors and these commissioners and these prefects and these satraps, they sought to find some charge, some negative charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But since Daniel was not the kind of leader where he would take bribe and carry out corruption and do things that are against the will of God, they could not find any negative charge or any fault against Daniel. Because Daniel was faithful, there was no error or fault found in him or his operations. Then these men said, and the scripture record this, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So these people came to the realization that the only way that we can negatively affect Daniel and push him out of the way is for us to institute a law or do something that will fight his faith because they noticed that Daniel was consistently a prayerful person. And the Bible records that these governors and these satraps and these commissioners and these top people in the kingdom ran before King Daniel, before King Darius, and said to him, O oh, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, all the administrators, all the satraps, all the counselors, the advisors, all these people have come together and have agreed that you should make a firm decree that whoever petitions, whoever prays to any other God for the next 30 days except praying to you, that person should be cast into the den of lions. And they influenced him and said, now king, can you sign the decree so that it cannot be changed? The purpose of this was to fight Daniel because he was more excellent than all of them. But the main core of this is that the king was counseled into the wrong actions. The king did not have the original intentions to sign a decree like that. The king was not thinking about it. But some people, because of their selfish desires, because of their selfish intentions, counsel the king to take wrong actions. And as kingdom professionals, as kingdom entrepreneurs, these are situations that we can go through. People around us, in the names of friends, in the, in, in the form of family members, in the form of colleagues, can counsel us to do things that will hurt us in the long run. One of the worst things that can happen to a leader, one of the worst things that can happen to a kingdom entrepreneur and kingdom professional or somebody who desires to create impact and lead a significant life is an individual that can be counseled into wrong actions. One of the most powerful things, one of the things that you must guard your heart against, you must guard yourself against, is to come to a place where you cannot be counseled into the wrong actions. People should not guide you 
into the wrong actions. The king was influenced by a group of selfish people who had different intentions and they influenced the king to sign a decree, to sign a document that was not right. And the king fell for it. The king fell for this wrong counsel. How many of us here have fallen into the wrong counsel? How many of us here have been victims of wrong counsel? Counsel that led to the wrong decisions that cost us a lot, either financially, career-wise, business-wise, spiritually, even family-wise. What is that counsel? So it is important that as we work on a daily basis to become vessels of honor, as we commit on a daily basis to make ourselves available for God to exhort us, for God to lift us, for God to bless us, for God to position us as channels of impact and transformation in the society, we need to also grow in our ability to act the right way when we are counseled by other people. And one thing about growth is that God loves people who can grow in terms of attitude, in terms of capacity. Because many people do not know how to handle fame and influence and access to resources. It is possible for somebody's breakthrough to be delayed because the person has not grown to that place where God can trust you with that position, with that opportunity, with those resources. One thing that when you study about God is that you will notice that he is a God of process. Not because he cannot make things happen in a day, but because he prefers to have you grow into that level where he can show you his faithfulness. How can you overcome faulty counseling? How can you live above poor counsel? How can you live a life that is above poor counseling from friends and from family members or whoever you are listening to? I will share you five ways or four ways that you can begin to use from today. Am I saying that you not listen to counsel? No. Everybody should have somebody they listen to. But there is a process that you should go through to filter the counsel that you receive. Friends have the right to, not the right, friends can advise you because of the relationship they have with you. Family members can advise you. Colleagues can advise you. The person you call your mentor can advise you. Even some people pay coaches to advise them. But the truth is, mature people must grow to the place where they understand how to filter the counsel that they receive before acting upon it. So how can you overcome faulty counseling? Because there is good counseling, but there's counseling that is faulty, is negative. There's counseling that will guide you into the wrong path of life. There's counseling that can take you from the ways of God. There is counseling that can take you from the will of God. There is counseling that can derail you from practicing kingdom principles that should change your life. Counsel into wrong actions. 
How can you overcome faulty counseling? Number one, not in any other, but number one, have an independent mind. Have an independent sound mind. When you study this encounter, you will notice that the king did not have an independent mind. The king heard it and went straight to work. He allowed other people to think for him. The most dangerous thing that can happen to anybody in this dispensation is to allow other people to think for you. You cannot be a professional, an entrepreneur, and you do not have the ability to think independently. You know, many a times when people cannot do better than you, they will counsel you into destruction. Do you know that? Yes. For example, I've seen that happen. You see a young lady having a very good marriage. And because the, she is so happy with her husband, the friends who are singles or have trouble with their own marriages, they start influencing that young lady to begin to do things that she, she, she doesn't want to do. And the, the, the main intention of that counseling is to hurt her own marriage so she can become like her. Oh, yes. Oh, same for men. There are people who are who can get angry and they're, they, they're, they're, they're alcoholics. They know it's bad, but they cannot stop it. But when you're with them and you don't drink alcohol, they'll be influencing you. Oh, you're not bad enough. You're not this. You'll be feeling as if they're doing that because they no, they want to counsel you into destruction, into the wrong action so you can become like them. And if you don't have an independent mind, you will be counseled into the wrong actions. You see? So, as Daniel's adversaries could have no advantage against Daniel, they had to form a law. They had to create a new law which the king signed with the intentions to ensnare Daniel to fall into that trap, you see? And they pretended as if the law was for the good of the king, but the law was for their sake. So if you are going to outgrow the scenario where you can be counseled into wrong actions or counseled into destruction, you need to have an independent mind. Know how to step outside of the counsel you're receiving and also think about the perspective other people have shared. They can share and you can be open to feedback. And when you are alone, critically think through. King Darius did not think through for a moment. He immediately acted on the counsel of from the people. And First Thessalonians chapter five verse twelve encourages us to test all things carefully. The ability to think your brain is a gift from God. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says, but test all things carefully so you can recognize what is good. Hold firmly to that which is good. Because your friends are telling you what to do and how to do, 
doesn't mean that you should act upon it instantly. I have, I have seen, I've had like I think the last few weeks, young ladies have come and complained to me how their husbands, whatever their whatever friend a friend A will say, they just go and do. When they come back, whatever friend B will say, they'll go and do. But when the guy talks to the wife in the night about what they will do, the next day if the guy go and listen to the brother or to the uh, to the another friend, boom, they just go and do what. But right, they cannot think for themselves. They cannot think and stand firm and make a conscious decision. They just receive and then they act. Many people have been counseled into the wrong actions. Many people have been counseled out of the will of God. There are people that should have been experiencing breakthroughs already, but because they were counseled to the wrong action, they were counseled away from the will of the Father. So number one way that you can overcome faulty counseling is to do what train yourself to have an independent mind. I love this first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21, but test all things carefully. Critically think through the counsel people are giving you. And you are testing so you can focus on what is good. So you don't act on what is wrong. And when you do that, hold firm to that which is good. That is your responsibility. And how can you develop an independent mind? A mind that you feel will have the ability to think. Your mind is like a muscle, those who go to the gym. The more you walk your muscle, the more it grows. If you don't walk it out, it's not going to change. So your mind is like a muscle. The more you build it, the more you grow it, the more you feed it with the right information, the more it will have the capacity to think, the mental intelligence to analyze information. Number two, by praying in the spirit, by praying in tongues, is a powerful way to refine your ability to filter information. Because when you begin to pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit through your human spirit collaborates with your brain, with your mind to filter the right information. Okay, so when you begin to do this, you begin to train yourself to have that independent mind. Number three, feeding the mind with the word. You intentionally study the Bible. The Bible begins to refine your mind and begin to feed your mind with the relevant information and spiritual intelligence that you need to be able to to think independently. Number two, the second way that you can overcome faulty counseling, the second way you can avoid being counseled into the wrong actions as a kingdom professional and entrepreneur. Number two, number two, have kingdom values and principles. Establish kingdom values and principles. This is the second way that you can avoid being counseled into the wrong actions. The second way you can avoid faulty counseling. Establish kingdom values and principles that we live by. It's a very powerful way. You see, it is possible for many people to deliberate in the wrong direction because they are relying on their own values. And somebody can advise you and counsel you 
based on their own values. And if they advise you based on their own values and you don't have your own values and principles, you will take actions based on their values, not on your values. It becomes a challenge. For example, I have, you know, in my work, I get to meet a lot of people, been to hotels and, and, and have meetings and go to international meetings and you see people who are married and before they go, it's, they're, they're flying with their girlfriends and side chicks. It's, to them, it's very normal to have a side chick. It's, it's part of life. It's a, it's, it's a normal routine now. It's a, new, it's a normal law now in this dispensation. And they'll be advising you and giving you advantages, <laughs> right, of doing that. And they are very serious and they're very intentional about the counsel. And they're advising you based on their own values and life principles. And if they advise you like that, and you don't have your own kingdom values and principles that you stand upon, you will fall you're like, oh, ah, maybe these guys are saying the truth there. I think, I think it's true. I think it's true. You are thinking on what basis? What is amplifying that you are thinking? People who don't have kingdom values and principles that they live by can easily be swayed into the wrong path. Many people have missed out on their destiny manifestation because they don't have any kingdom values and principles that they live by. So they quickly get counseled out of the path of God. They quickly get influenced out of the ways of God. When you study the life of Daniel, you will see that Daniel had unwavering integrity and faith in God. And it is this integrity and faith in God that protected him from this conspiracy. His consistent prayer life and refusal, Daniel refused. He insisted that he will continue to pray. That was his kingdom principle. No matter what happens, I will pray. My kingdom principle is that on a daily basis, I have to fellowship with the Father. That was his fact. That was his principle. That was his core lifestyle value. He was consistent in the place of fellowship. He refused to compromise his integrity. If you are going to overcome faulty counseling in this crazy society, you need to establish kingdom values deep, deep into the Bible. Understand the character of God. Understand the ways of the kingdom. Have certain kingdom values and principles that you hold dear to your heart and begin to live by them. I always say that based on where you're going to, there's a certain lifestyle that you maintain because of where you're going to. Oh, yes. There are certain things that some people don't do, not because they don't want to do them. It's because you have chosen a higher purpose. You have chosen a higher life. You have chosen a better path. I was jokingly talking to a friend. So you think somebody like me, that I need to advise kings, I now go and get drunk and drink alcohol, and now fall in the gutter. Or I now go and I'm misbehaving here and there and having side chicks in every town that I go. It doesn't reflect the kingly anointing that I have to, 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 to advise kings and top muggles across the world. And we laughed about it. Based on where you're going, there are certain things that you stop doing because of the path that you have chosen. You kill your flesh. You fight your flesh. You stop gossiping because you are bigger than gossips. Take the time that you're gossiping and build your capacity so you can manifest the destiny God has for you. 
but you have to establish kingdom values and principles. And the best one of the best ways that this works is establish kingdom values and principles by the help of the Holy Spirit around the things that you know that you are weak in, around the areas of your life that you know that you are weak in, or you're in an environment that they can influence you to fall into that area. For example, if you're in an environment whereby alcohol can quickly sway you, one of your kingdom principles should be that you need to avoid drinking alcohol no matter what is the situation. You train yourself to honor that principle, to honor that lifestyle. So that when somebody is counseling you into something, you have an anchor principle. You have an anchor core value that you cannot break. You see, it is very important. And you know, there is something called societal pressure. Personal principles versus societal pressure. One of the best ways that you can beat societal pressure is for you to establish personal principles. Because everybody's doing it doesn't mean that you must do it. As they always fondly say, because you are quarter mates, you are not grace mates, you are not destiny mates. Stop copying everybody around. You are not walking the same path. You cannot be destined to travel the world and do great things and then you are doing the same things that people in the quarter who are not conscious of their destiny and purpose are not serious about creating impact are doing. You are doing a disservice to yourself. You are allowing them to counsel you into the wrong path. You are a young girl and you're supposed to do great things around the world and then you because every young girl is wearing a short skirt, now I want to wear a short skirt, I want to copy. No, you need to outgrow that. Instead of the world copying from us, many of us are copying from the world. We need to have kingdom principles and lifestyles, values that the world can see us, see the results we are producing and copy from us. And say, no, what we are doing is not working. But what that guy is doing is working. We need to copy from that guy. And the Bible is very clear about this. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, and do not be conformed to this world. Do not conform, do not copy from the world. No, the world is supposed to copy from us. We are the ambassadors of the kingdom. Do not be conformed to the world. No, do not copy values. From the world. Do not copy principles from the world. No. Be transformed by kingdom values and principles and live by those values and principles. That's how you change your world. Number three, how can you overcome faulty counseling? Number three, are, are you being blessed? Are you being blessed? Number three, seek information and ask intelligent questions. Seek information and ask intelligent questions. This is one of the most powerful ways that you can overcome faulty counseling. When somebody is advising you, don't just take what they are saying and then you make decisions also go and do your own research this is why many people have been scammed in this popular traveling thing like i was talking to a young lady and she paid somebody how many hundred thousand for a visa to go to a country that cameroonians go to that country visa free she went and paid for visa fee that no stupidity lack the People that don't seek information and ask intelligent questions will always be counseled into the wrong actions. You hear something, boom, you just act upon it. Even if you are hearing from a trusted, credible person, you hear from me, a wise person, a wise person, 
go and seek information, verify it, validate it, ask more intelligent questions if you can. Nothing wrong with that. The challenge is the king listened to these people and acted immediately. He listened and he acted. He skipped two important things, research and asking questions. Oh, king, pass a law that says this, this, this. Okay, thank you. I have heard. Boom, sign the document. A wise king will never do that. A wise kingdom professional an entrepreneur would never do that. If you are going to avoid faulty counseling, avoid people from counseling you and destroying your, your marriage, your relationship, your career, your business, your, your, your spiritual growth and all of that, when they say whatever they are saying, you can say, thank you, I've heard. But as a wise person, you tell them that Joybert taught me that wise people, when they hear, they don't act. They do two things. They validate what they heard by seeking more information, or they go ahead and ask more intelligent questions to other people, or they come back to you and ask <clears throat> more intelligent questions. Don't be like King Darius. Don't hear and act, that's how you will end up making the wrong decisions. That's how you end up in a faulty path that may end up consuming you as a person. The king totally forgot the excellence of Daniel in his duty because the Bible records that Daniel had the spirit of excellence and he was so good at his work. So this is where influenced him to sign a decree and Daniel refused to respect it and the king fell for it without asking further questions, without carrying out further research. A wise person will never do that. Be careful of walking the path of destruction because of makeup stories. People have taken the wrong action because of makeup stories. Daniel had no skeleton in, in his closet. His enemies examined his life and found nothing to attack him. So they had to make, the, they made up a story, influenced King Darius to sign, and he fell for it. He was not a wise king who sit and observe, who sit and ask questions, who sent his, 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 his subordinates to do more investigation and bring feedback. Many of you listening to me, you have ended up in the wrong path of life or taking the wrong action because you heard and you acted. You, you did not hear and seek information. You did not even pray about it. You never ask the Holy Spirit, is this the right path? You not say, you know what, I'll pray about it for two days if I act. Nothing. You heard and you acted. Now you crashed. You ended up in the wrong spot. You are blaming village people and say that you were cursed. No. Many a times you were not cursed. It was lack of wisdom. That uh, James chapter 1 verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. That scripture is teaching us the power of asking. Ask, ask, ask. Ask for information. Ask intelligent questions. Ask for wisdom from God. Don't hear and act. People have lost money because they heard. Boom. And they acted. Two days later, that's how they lost money. If anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask God. The scripture is teaching us the power of asking. From today, don't make that mistake again. See, these are lifestyle kingdom insights that if Christians understand, 
and begin to live by, some prayer points will disappear from your life. Wait, it's not when I hear some prayer points that people pray about. It's, 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 it's from the outcome of poor lifestyle and bad decision making. And the, the funny thing is that we have been empowered with these abilities. The challenge is we have not grown in the place of wisdom. We have not matured. So next time, when somebody counsels you, go stay up at night, stay up in the morning, whatever. Seek information. Do further research. Ask more intelligent questions before you ask. Lastly, and then we pray. If you are going to avoid being counseled into the wrong actions, you are going to avoid faulty counseling Always seek the face of God for alignment. Always seek the will of God for alignment. If King Darius was spiritual enough, if King Darius was somebody who had the attitude of seeking the will of God, he should have found the alignment in the spiritual realm that what Daniel was doing was right. But since he did not seek the face of God for alignment, he acted the wrong way. And of course, we know that he regretted, right? Because the lion did not consume Daniel for breakfast. You see? Seek the face of God for alignment. Anytime you're about to make an important decision in your life, and even if you're seeking counsel from people, pray about it yourself. God has different thousands, millions of ways to come through for you. Sometimes people don't pray because they feel that I don't even know how to hear the voice of God. That's not your job, is to pray about it first. Before you know it, somebody can, uh, uh, you can even, while you're reading the Bible, you stumble on a verse that will, the Holy Spirit will pass through that verse and convict your heart and give you the answer to what you are praying for. Or in a ministration like this, before you know it, your name is mentioned and you begin to hear a prophecy directed to you that you, God has different ways to meet up to you and confirm and give you response. The problem is we quickly just, I used to do that a lot. I don't pray about it, but I'm like, I don't know how to hear the voice of God. But I began to learn that my responsibility is to pray. Leave the rest to God. Because God can speak to you from anywhere at any time. You see? But your job is to seek the face of God for alignment. This part I'm about to take. All these counsels I have received from different people. But Lord, what are you saying? Yes, I have asked for thoughts. I have asked for for elders to counsel me, I've asked my pastor, I've asked his, but Lord, what are you saying? Pray about it. Seek the will of God about it. You will hardly be counseled into the wrong actions if you seek the face of God. And another easy way to seek the ways of God in the place of this counsel is what does the Bible say? Because the Bible is the word of God and the word of God is the ways of God. You are now, for example, you are now a married woman. And because your husband is cheating and your friends know about it, they go and cheat also. What does the Bible say about a woman being faithful? In marriage, what, what what does it say? Go to the scriptures. That is the will of God for you, because somebody sinning doesn't mean that you should sin. What is your responsibility? What is the scripture saying? The first place 
to start seeking the will of God is look for scriptures that are speaking for or against that thing that they're going through. That is the first platform. And trust me, when you do it prayerfully, God always come alive and begin to give you further counsel through either by ministering to your spirit or by giving somebody a prophetic word for you, whatever, but you need to take the responsibility to do that. You see, we need to be conscious about this because many people are insisting on something that does not mean it is the right thing to do. The voice of the people is not the voice of God. That's not a scripture. The voice of the people is not the voice of God. So don't assume that because many people are saying it, I can't do it. No. You see, when you study this, this encounter, you will notice that Daniel's colleagues, all these commissioners and governors and satraps and prefects, they envy and they did not like Daniel at all. And this led them to the creation of the law that trapped both the king and Daniel. You see? And this shows how advice and counsel can be used in a malicious way for personal gains. These counselors and these governors and these satraps, they use counsel, they use advice as a weapon to fight Daniel and to influence the king. Unfortunately, the king acted urgently based on what was said. He acted urgently based on what he heard. He did not also take steps to seek spiritual intelligence from God, to seek the face of God. You see, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. Whatever step you're about to take, whatever situation you're in, whatever thing that people are giving you advice, left and right, friends and family members, everybody's claiming to be right. Whatever they're doing, what is the Lord saying? You can even reach out to your friend who is spiritual, to your pastor, to whoever, say, please, can you pray with me? I would like, to, what is God saying? Many a times it happens to me a lot. Sometimes I'm praying for something and now the Holy Spirit laid, laid to my heart to ask someone to pray with me. And that person will always give me a word that, oh, whatever you're thinking of doing, this is what the Lord is saying. But by all means, be intentional at acknowledging the Lord in all your ways. Be intentional at recognizing him. When you do that, you will not be counseled into the wrong actions. This particular ministration is so close to my heart because I have seen people miss out on their seasons of breakthrough and manifestation, not because a witch was fighting them, not because a family altar was fighting them, but because they allowed friends and colleagues and family members to influence them into a path that is not of God, into actions that is not of God. You can pray for 20 days and one wrong counsel can derail you from the moment and from the position where God wanted to bless you. Do not be counseled into the wrong actions. Do not be counseled outside the will of God. By all means, 
protect and intentionally take the right actions by the help of God. It's time to pray. I'm going to pray briefly and then we'll round up. Number one prayer. You are going to just open your mouth and worship God and just exalt Him. I appreciate God for how far He has brought you. Many a times we have made the we have made mistakes, but God's grace and mercy restored us back. We were counseled into the wrong actions, but yet you are still here. God gave many of us second chances, another opportunity. So just open your mouth, unmute your mics, and just begin to worship God. Just get into the place. Yes, somebody pray, somebody pray, wash God, Father, the glory, the glory, Father, 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 the
begin to decree that reality into your life. Father, most holy, deliver me, O King of Kings, from any evil one. Father, Lord, upon any evil one, I will ask me to give you this manifestation of the word. Father, in your word, say so to the Lord, those that come to you will not have part of you. This one will be afraid of the Lord. This one will be afraid of the Lord. This one will be afraid of the Lord. Deliver me from any one that will walk on the way. Deliver me from any one that will walk on the way. Deliver me from any one that will walk on the way. Deliver me from any one that will walk on the way. Deliver me from any one that will walk on the way. Deliver me from any one that will walk on the way. Deliver me from any one that will walk on the way. Deliver me from any one that will walk on the way. In the name of Jesus, let my life shine. Father, Lord, turn away from me any part of the glory that is meant to Father Lord to derail me from focusing on you, to derail me from focusing on my life, to derail me from focusing on my life, to derail me from focusing on my life, to derail me from focusing on my life. Thank in the name of Jesus, let me pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Father, take the praise and take the glory. Lord, as we face this new week, anybody, Lord, that is going for any trip, any interview, whatever, Father, let your favor speak for that person in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that may you protect each and every one in this fellowship as they go out and come back in, in the name of Jesus. Father, bless the works of their hands in a special way, in the name of Jesus. Whatever evil plot, Lord, in anybody's career, anybody's life, anybody's business, Father, turn it for good in the name of Jesus. Turn it into a mighty testimony in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Take the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being part of today's session. I believe you were blessed and God will definitely do a mighty testimony in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have a great week. Your week is blessed. Your week is favored. And you will testify in Jesus' name. Amen.